In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a Salesian of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. This is my day. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. It is Thursday, the twenty first of September, twenty twenty three. 24th week in ordinary time and today we keep the feast of Saint Matthew Apostle. This man was born in Capernaum and was working as a tax collector when Jesus called him. He is thought by some scholars to have written an early version of his gospel in Aramaic, a precursor to the Greek version we now have. He is also said to have preached in the East. Participating in the proclamation of the Word of God for today are the following Daily Bread members. Sandra Makatini, celebrating her birthday today from Durban, South Africa, takes for us the first reading. Bruno and Grace Olweni from Gaborone, Botswana, Celebrating their wedding anniversary today, take for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Eric Owo, a Salesian of Don Bosco, celebrating his birthday today, working in Kor Masabit, Kenya. Let us pray. O oh God, who with untold mercy were pleased to choose as an apostle St. Matthew, the tax collector, grant that sustained by his example and intercession, we may merit to hold firm in following you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. His gifts were that some should be apostles, some evangelists. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 7, and verses 11 to 13. Brethren, I, a prisoner for the Lord, beg you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all lowliness and meekness, with patience, forbearing one another in love eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is above all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. And his gifts were that some should be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for the equipment of the saints, for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, Psalms 19, verses 2 to 3, 4 to 5. Response is taken from Psalms 19, verses 5a. And the response is, Their sound goes forth through all the earth. Their, Their sound goes forth through all the earth. earth. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims the work of his hands. Day unto day conveys the message, and night unto night imparts the knowledge. Their sound goes forth through all the earth. No speech, no word, whose voice goes unheeded. Their sound goes
goes forth through all the earth, their message to the utmost bounds of the world. Their sound goes forth through all the earth. Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as the Lord. The glorious band of apostles sings your praise, O Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Follow me, and he rose and followed him. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 to 13. At that time, as Jesus passed on, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as he sat at table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Happy Feast of the Tax Collector, Matthew. And when I think of the call of Matthew, I feel encouraged. I feel encouraged because Matthew was busy doing something else when God was busy preparing something else in his life. Matthew was there Stuck at the tax office, I suppose he had his own programs, he had his own timetable, he knew what he wanted to achieve at the tax office. He had even an agenda, he even had a budget for his own life and for his own money that he was collecting, even as he was planning to deceive the people. God had something else for him. You know, we may plan our own lives. We may have something in mind in our lives, but we don't know what God has in mind. That's why I love my God. He's a God of surprises. You know, he surprises us. You can think of your own calling, even as a married man. You plan to marry somebody else. I know you did, except those who can talk about their first loves. But there are many people who had planned to marry a man of their choice or a man of their dreams or a woman of their dreams and ended up with somebody they never planned to have. And in the end, that somebody became the best that they could have. God of surprises. He does that in our lives. You know, you thought of your dream job. You wanted to be a pilot or you wanted to be an accountant. You wanted to be a teacher, but you ended up being a nurse. God of surprises and God is doing wonders in your life as a nurse. A thing you never thought of becoming. You wanted to become a politician like me, but you ended up being a priest. (laughs) And that's a God of surprises. He comes to us when we are busy planning something else. But he must find us at work. He must find us doing something. He saw Matthew doing something. And as he saw him, he told him, follow me. Because I want people who are busy. And I want to work with people who already are thinking of something in their lives. Because then it will be easier for me to operate in their lives. If you're not thinking of anything in your life. If you're not planning anything in your life. God may not come to you. Whatever you are thinking of doing, at least think of doing something. You may be even thinking of something crooked. At least plan something. And in the process, God may come to you and say, follow me. Gladly go the direction of God. And where God leads you is always a perfect direction. And he did that. Matthew followed and he 
did not just follow. No, he went with Jesus. He took Jesus to his own house. He took him to his own home. Listen, being a follower of Christ is not just a career. No, it's not a career. It is a way of life. So being the way of life, you go with your Jesus to your home. Let Jesus be found in our homes. Let Jesus be found in our workplaces. Let Jesus be found where our friends are. You know this man, he had a company of very crooked people, his fellow tax collectors. And even some of those prostitutes who were benefiting from his money came for that celebration of transformation. They also became a part of the new company, the company of Jesus. Many of us get transformed in our lives. We change and we leave the company we had. We leave the friends we had. Forget about them and start a new life. But wait a minute. Be Matthew. Don't leave out anybody. If you have found something special, if you have found Jesus and you are convinced this is the Lord of your life, this is somebody who has changed your life, you are not going to leave out somebody else. No, you're going to bring also those you were drinking with, you were smoking with. Let them know what you have found and let them join you. Let them celebrate with you. Let them know there is something better in their lives. Don't just say, it is my own salvation, and so I have found my Lord. I don't now have anything to do with those people who were a bad company to me. No. Matthew invited the tax collectors and prostitutes who might have been still in their professions. And through Matthew, they were also transformed. They met the Lord of their lives. So don't give up. After giving up on a particular way of life, don't give up on those friends because they become your project now. They become your own field of evangelization. Let them also enjoy what you are enjoying, unless you are not convinced. If you are not convinced of the faith you have found, then I understand you. Then I understand the reason why you are not bringing them to your faith. Then I understand the reason why you don't want them to accompany you for a pilgrimage. Because you think it's a tour. A pilgrimage is not a tour. It's a place where we are going to meet the Lord. And if it is a place I'm going to meet the Lord then I shouldn't allow anyone to miss that. I'll be a Matthew. I will invite my friends. I will invite my old friends. If you know what you believe in, you will then know it is only one hope, one faith that the first reading speaks about from chapter 4 of the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. There is one body and one spirit, just as You were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, even of those who are mischievous, even of those whom you think should not be in your company, in the Father of all, it is only one. So if you leave them out, where are they going to be? If we have only one Lord, one faith, one hope, let them share in it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Thursday to you, and happy feast of St. Matthew. Thanks be to God. This is my daily bread. Your very word. Spoken to me. And I
Tears in your eyes.